Hey guys, Alex Hamilton, U-Rise Education. Right now we're standing at University Yard in the heart of the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. We're gonna take you all around the campus this afternoon. We're starting off our visit of GW's urban campus on 22nd Street, just south of Washington Circle, where you'll see the Katzen Cancer Research Center of the renowned George Washington University School of Medicine. As we hit I Street, you can see GWU's Academic Center, which we'll visit later. You'll also see the university's state-of-the-art science and engineering hall. Across the street, you'll see Gelman Library, the main one on campus, and on our side is Madison Hall, one of the university's many residential halls. Farther south on 22nd, you'll see Duque Hall of the University School of Business, while Funger Hall contains classrooms and event spaces. Across G Street, you'll see the Charles E. Smith Center, home to the D1 Colonials basketball team. Continue along G Street to see the Multicultural Student Services Center. Across the street is a university-affiliated high school, School Without Walls. Past that is the psychology department for the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences. Across from us is the Graduate School of Education and Human Development. While on our side is the famed Monroe Hall, also known as the Hall of Government. You also see the Cisneros Hispanic Leadership Institute and Strong Hall, a Greek life res hall. From the side entrance to Monroe, you can see the GWU Museum. That brings us to our starting point, University Yard, the heart of campus. On the left, you'll see Corcoran Hall, the first building on the Foggy Bottom campus and home to the physics department. Bell Hall hosts biological sciences and is bounded by the law school complex. In the distance, 2013 H Street holds offices and it sits beside the Media and Public Affairs building. The building in the back, the shops at 2000 Penn, holds offices and plenty of food options for students. On the northwestern edge of the yard, Samson holds the theater and dance production design program and connects to Corcoran. Walk past Media and Public Affairs in Samson to see Lisner Auditorium, the university's music and concert venue. Well, across the street is the University Student Center, which hosts a plethora of activities for everybody involved in the GWU community. At its left is District House, GWU's second largest residential hall. This brings us to the trustees gate of the mid-campus quad in Kogan Plaza, a popular hangout spot. Walk along Kogan and you'll see the Gelman Library, which we passed earlier, as well as the quad's Tempietto. From the Statue of Washington, you can see Monroe Hall in the background. As we walk out of Kogan, you can see the Academic Center, which includes Phillips Hall, Rome Hall, and the Smith Hall of Art. The Academic Center is home to the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, housing most of its department 
and it also contains the Corcoran School of the Arts and Design. At the foot of the building, a statue of Alexander Pushkin can provide inspiration for aspiring writers and poets. A few blocks east, at Murrow Park, you can see the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, placing GWU students at the forefront of world affairs. A few blocks farther east, you can even get views of the White House. And at its side, the Eisenhower Executive Building. As you can see, George Washington University is a great choice for students who are interested in studying in an urban environment within our nation's capital. You even have access to resources including the IMF and the World Bank, and that's something you're not going to find at any other university in the world. GW brings around a 40% acceptance rate. So with this in mind, how can we maximize our chances for admission? Fortunately, the university gives students the option of responding to one of two prompts that they can use to set themselves apart. Let's get into them. Now this question is a more extensive version of one that we might have seen on a previous prompt, such as UNC's, what would you change about your community? In a lot of ways, this is similar to other community prompts, meaning that you could talk about a community experience that you've had and use that as a launch pad for what kinds of changes you would hope to make at a greater scale in the future. For instance, if you've been volunteering at a hospital, then you can talk about how you hope in the future we can make some innovations and developments in our medical system. Or if you volunteer for a cultural affinity group, you can talk about how you hope in the future to promote that group's values at a greater level. You have a lot of different ways to approach this question, but just make sure that you talk not only about where your interest started, but also where you hope that can lead you in the future. Now, let's take a look at option two. This question also resembles other common prompts, including Brown's talk about a time when you learned from a different perspective. And it can be a bit difficult because you don't want to think about a topic that's cliche. Plus, you obviously want the answer to that last question, did this exchange create change, new perspectives, or deeper relationships, to be yes. On the bright side, this topic is very similar to the typical challenge essay, where you have to discuss how you overcame some kind of adversity only in this case, we want to focus on one that involved communication skills to do so. I'd start brainstorming this essay by thinking about the most meaningful activities that you've completed in your high school career. Then you can consider which of those involved intense challenges, especially those that required communication to solve them. If you want this essay to stand out a little bit more, you can bring a spin to what would normally be a conventional topic. For instance, say you're in debate and as a result, it's your task to debate an opposing side while convincing the judges that your argument is more sound. This is something that all debaters do. But what if you and your debate partner ran into issues before you even got to that stage? For instance, what if you two couldn't even agree upon the correct course of action that you would take in refining your argument? How would you work that out? If you don't have any such meaningful activities to think about, then I would start close to home in this question. I would think about the role that communication has played in resolving conflicts within your friends or family community, or perhaps a religious or cultural community. Remember, stories require attention to be effective, so make sure that you get plenty of details into the situation and context, as well as what is at stake here. Also, be sure to detail the specific steps that you took in order to facilitate greater communication. From empathetically hearing the case of the other side, to laying out your case in a methodical way. And that's it. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Also be sure to check out some of our other videos on tours and essay guidance. And if you're interested in attending GWU, make sure you mention down in the comments below what you're most excited about. With that being said, good luck on applications and I'll see you in the next one.